Hi, I'm Maisie Peters, and this is the Who Can Do Will Book It List. This is maybe my favorite book. I've read it a few times, but it's pretty big, so I recommend this book to everybody. Um, and I have lots of copies because I keep giving them uh, to people. Donna Tartt has dedicated it to Brett Easton Ellis, and Brett Easton Ellis wrote American Psycho. It's a book about a group of college students in North America in Vermont, I think. And there's five, five students and they're all part of this elite college class uh, of ancient Greek. And they have this tutor called Julian who's very eccentric. The prologue has um, one of the characters uh, is dead. And then you sort of spend the first half of the book catching up to how that happens. And then um, the other half, sort of the consequences of that. I love the characters in this book and I and I love, I think I love that whole world of like ancient Greece and mythology and, and I also like New England a lot uh, and I think it's like super romantic. Um, so sort of paired together, it's like my perfect book and I love this book. And as I said, I recommend it to everybody but it is kind of long so you have to have some time. But there you go, Donald Hart, The Secret History. I used to write um, short stories when I was a kid. Then I realized that books are really long and songs are like quite short. And so sort of swapped lanes, efficiency. Songs are just efficiency books really. So that's what I sort of turned towards. My parents definitely uh, would have encouraged me and they both read a lot, especially my mum. And we have so many books in my house, in my parents' house. Um, and I used to read their books when I was really young. Uh, really, really inappropriate books I read uh, at the age of seven. And I used to go to the library a lot as well, like my local library where I used to live. Um, and I guess school as well would have encouraged it, but I just was, I just really liked reading and I still do. I still would rather read than watch something. I don't really know how to explain this, but I'm too impatient for like some, for the for the show and the characters in the show and the and the film or the, or the TV show to like tell me the, the story. I want to like just read the story at my pace, which is faster. So I would pr prefer reading to like films really. So now I've picked up with a very similar looking cover, um, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I actually I've had it recommended by a few different people. Um, a friend of mine uh, who's also a musician called Leve I recommended this book to me ages ago. She was like, you have to read Rebecca, you would love Rebecca. Um, and then my mum also has always loved Rebecca and, and was so pleased when she saw I was reading it. But obviously I was doing that natural thing where you refuse to do the thing that your parents tell you to do. Um, but I did, I did end up reading it um, and I loved it. I was surprised by the, I don't know if it's a plot twist. I, I obviously can't tell you and I don't want to spoil it, but there's a sort of change, uh, that happens halfway through the book. And I was surprised and I was surprised that I was surprised because I feel like this is a classic and sort of a lot of the times with these books, you sort of see it coming or, or you at least think about different things that happen. But there was a there was a line where I was like, oh, I too am surprised as a reader. Um, so yeah, that was, it was good. I was humbled by Daphne du Maurier and Rebecca. So I think I posted it online and somebody said that apparently uh, this book somewhat inspired Tolerate It by Taylor Swift, which uh, if you're one of the girls and that means something to you. That's like the most niche crossover, but I am within that Venn diagram. So I thought that was cool. Probably my taste in books does have an impact on my songwriting. I mainly read fiction. I don't really read nonfiction. I guess that probably has widened my imagination. And I used to write a lot more, just inventing worlds and people and characters and places. And I think those two things definitely have a correlation. I wrote half of a song based on the beginning of Rebecca um, when I started reading it like a few weeks ago. Uh, lyrics and melodies will probably come together. I think they sort of come side by side, uh, not normally one over the other. Although sometimes I have a specific idea, lyrical idea that I want to write. I rarely have a specific melody I want to write. Do I have a favorite Greek myth? I mean, obviously I like Helen of Troy um, and that's in my song, History of Man, which is at the end of The Good Witch. I didn't really realize that it was lodged so deeply in my brain, but then I wrote History of Man and it wasn't like something I think about a lot, but now, I mean, it is something I've thought about more. Um, and yeah, I, I like the story of Helen of Troy and I think it's interesting to see it through different lenses and that's kind of what I did with that song. So the next book is Joan Didion, uh, The Year of Magical Thinking. Um, 
Joan Didion has a lot of books that I love. Uh, Road to Bethlehem, I love. The White Album, I love. So Joan Didion, if you don't know, is like a famous American journalist, I would say, and writer. Um, and she's she's been around since the 70s, and so she documented a lot of America throughout the, from the 70s to now. She died a few years ago, sadly. It's about how her husband died suddenly um, of a heart attack. And uh, pff, like a few days before that, her only daughter was taken to hospital and she was seriously ill. Um, and it's basically just documents Joan Gideon's way through that, I guess. And it's about grief and loss and love and also like the mundanities of grief and of life and how it goes on after these things happen. I feel like I've used that a lot in terms of like even my life and talking about, you know, breakups or um, talking to friends about people that you know are no longer in your life. And I just always thought that was an interesting thought. So yeah, that's Year of Magical Thinking. It's Joan. I love Joan. She was really inspiring to The Good Witch. How do I pick what to read next? Probably a lot of friends, uh, friends recommendations. I have a bookshop that I go to a lot in London. It's called Brick Lane Bookshop and they have like a shelf when you go through the door and it's got sort of their recommended reads and I've definitely read a few of those in my time. I don't know how many books I own, I couldn't count, but I do own a fair amount and I don't really like, to my detriment, I don't really like Kindles or e-readers, I like books, um, but it's a nightmare because you go on tour and you like bring five books and then you buy two more and then suddenly your suitcase weighs like 100 pounds. I like physical books, I like bookshelves with books on. I'm actually not very good at reading books while on tour, but I am good at reading books on the plane. Um, and I do a lot of flights and airports. So I will like read a whole book on a flight. This is Margaret Atwood, Elias Grace. I also read this book on a flight, now I'm thinking about it. This is probably the one I have the shakiest memory of, um, but I picked it because I just really loved it. And I love Margaret Atwood. And she wrote The Handmaid's Tale, which is I think her probably most famous. Um, which I also loved. Guess it's sort of like a murder thriller, and it's also sort of set in a women's jail. Grace Marks is a is a maid, and without spoiling it, it's whether or not she's guilty of this of this murder and this crime, and she goes to prison. And I clearly like books about women's jails because I also just read a book called Eileen, and that's also about women in prison. They're not in the prison though; they're like the staff. I actually do. Uh, everyone would be pleased to hear, occasionally read a book by a man too. Um, I actually quite like some male authors. I like a uh, uh, male American author called Jonathan Franzen, who I, I really like. Um, so yeah, I, I promise occasionally I, I do read the words of a man. I just try to limit it, because I, I, you know, I, I hear enough. This is going to be uh, Wendy Cope, Serious Concerns. Uh, which is fair enough, you couldn't find a copy. I've got a copy at home, but I, I do think it might be a little bit niche. So this is a poetry book, and I actually don't really read that much poetry, but I do like this one. This is called The Orange, and she goes, at lunchtime I bought a huge orange, the size of it made us all laugh. I peeled it and shared it with Robert and Dave, they got quarters and I had a half. And that orange, it made me so happy, as ordinary things often do, just slightly. The shopping, a walk in the park, this is peace and contentment, it's new. The rest of the day was quite easy, I did all the jobs on my list, and enjoyed them and had some time over, I love you, I'm glad I exist. Yeah, so it's just lots of little poems, but I just, I've always liked it, and I have a little copy, and I like, will give, again, will like give this book to people as well if I, for like birthday presents and stuff, because I think it's sweet. Um, and yeah, just a little poetry book to end. Probably I would be uh, less special and original if everybody else was reading lots of books, and I would like that less. So it's probably for the best that everyone else, you know, doesn't, doesn't get on that. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs>